Hello everyone, Mr. Lipchick here, and our topic is operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is a learning process. Unlike classical conditioning, however, it involves learning through reinforcement. As reinforcements are presented or removed, learning occurs. Early research in operant conditioning was conducted by Edward L. Thorndike. He conducted his learning research with cats. Thorndike's early experiments involving cats negotiating mazes were designed to find out if animals learn tasks through observation or imitation. The result was that cats learned to free themselves from the mazes, called puzzle boxes, but not by observation. The cats learned through a trial and error process, which Thorndike labeled instrumental learning. Thorndike observed that the repetition of the reward, being freed from the box, would occur and that cats thereby strengthened their stimulus response associations. Through these studies, Thorndike developed the law of effect, which suggests that behavior or behaviors that are followed by something positive are likely to be repeated, while those that are followed by something negative are less likely to be repeated. B.F. Skinner. In the 1940s and 50s, B.F. Skinner developed the term operant behavior. Operant behavior is defined as the behavior that a person engages in and produces and how the, that behavior impacts the environment. Using the Skinner box, he was able to train rats and pigeons to press a lever in order to obtain food pellets as a reward. The steps in using the Skinner box are as follows. One, food pellets are introduced so that the, uh, to the animal so that it knows what they are. Two, the animal is capable of generating a response, uh, either by running around the box or pressing a lever. Three, the experiment chooses a conditioned response, pressing the lever, to pair with the unconditioned stimulus, which is the food. After training, the animals show a conditioned response, pressing the lever, even in the absence of the food, which is the unconditioned response and the reward. Skinner's experiment led him to the conclusion that the environment reacts to our behavior and either reinforces or eliminates the behavior. Therefore, the environment is the key to understanding behavior. Skinner believed that the environment was the key to understanding even the most complex human behaviors. Skinner believed that learning results from changes in overt behavior. That is behavior that can be uh, clearly observed. Accordingly, all behavior is caused, shared, and maintained by its consequences. Voluntary responses are learned through operant conditioning. A stimulus occurs, that is, a problem is presented. A response is given, the problem-solving behavior. And a stimulus is received as a result, a feeling of satisfaction from solving the problem. different types of operant conditioning. The key to operant conditioning, according to Skinner, is reinforcement. And reinforcement can be positive or negative. A reinforcement can be anything that changes a response. There are four types of operant conditioning. One, positive reinforcement, Strength strengthens a behavior by introducing something desired to increase the targeted behavior. For example, giving your dog a treat when he lifts his paw to shake hands.
negative reinforcement is taking something unwanted, taking away something unwanted to increase a desired behavior. Uh, for example, allowing a child out of his room for apologizing for misbehaving. Positive punishment is responded to an unwanted behavior by adding something unfavorable to decrease the behavior. An example would be an army sergeant making a soldier do push-ups for failing to come to attention. Negative punishment is taking away something desired by the subject in response to an undesired behavior. An example would, would be a child fails his or her test in school and the parent makes them give up TV for an evening. Negative punishment serves to decrease the likelihood that an undesirable behavior will occur. Uh, there are also different types of reinforcers, and these are classified as primary and secondary reinforcers. Primary reinforcers are those that satisfy basic biological needs, such as food, shelter, and comfort. Secondary reinforcers are those that people associate with primary reinforcers through classical conditioning. An example would be money, which is needed to maintain our primary reinforcers. Punishment, uh, must be noted, can be used effectively or ineffectively. Punishment administered in a broad manner that covers irrelevant behaviors that do not teach right from wrong is ineffective. Punishment should have a logical connection to the specific misbehavior. Misbehavior is often difficult to immediately punish. The passage of time allows the person to gain the benefit of the behavior before it can be punished. Punishment after a lapse of time is also ineffective. Punishment may tell a person what not to do, but it does not communicate to the person what he or she should do. Extreme punishment, especially physical, is a risk factor for low self-esteem and depression and other behavioral problems. The effectiveness of punishment may be temporary and depend on the presence of the punishing person. There are educational applications for uh, the operant conditioning discoveries. Operant conditioning has revealed to parents and teachers that the best, uh, that positive reinforcement is the best measure to bring about desired behavior in children. Negative punishment is most effective when eliminating, when de uh, desire, the desire is to eliminate uh, inappropriate behaviors. And that concludes our discussion. Thank you for attending, and I look forward to seeing you in the live lessons. Have a great day.